everybody. Now then, the theme... It's time for morning assembly at the new Earswick Primary School in York. As usual, the pupils take their places in the hall, and, as usual, the head teacher Carol Farrer, stands in front of them. Um, as a grown-up, I've been going off learning things at the National College... But this morning, something unusual is about to happen. Something that will change school life, and, in at least one case, save a school career. What I was trying to do was um, actually make my assemblies uh, more interesting for the children. I had fallen into the habit of using off-the-shelf material or um, pre-prepared assemblies from the internet. So I decided to write my own assemblies on the theme of learning. Um, I was trying to be a little bit creative and think, well, what could I do for, for what could I do that will give them something to kind of hook? The skill she chooses to learn is juggling. Inevitably, the balls soon end up on the floor. See, I'm not really very good at this, children. Unexpectedly, they're picked up by teacher Iva Leonard. Pupils and staff are amazed, but the surprises are not about to end. Step forward, supply teacher Andy Peacock. Because I'm a supply teacher, I just happened to be in on that assembly the day that she, she did it. And uh, she did her little attempt, if you like. Then Mr Leonard, who's a reasonably competent juggler himself, took over. Uh, but they were both unaware that I was sort of sat there and I've been juggling for about ooh, 15, 16 years, something like that. I think what Miss Farrow is trying to put up is the fact that if you practice and you stick to something for a long time, you may get as good as Mr. Peacock. <laughs> this is what I do when I teach you about a very important day. We won't call the machine for you. Here we go. Pupils who had entered the hall expecting another unexciting but worthy assembly are treated to a dazzling display of juggling trickery. I looked at him and I thought, wow, that is amazing. Not surprisingly, some pupils decide to try it for themselves. Then some more, and even more still, until juggling takes over the school. And I know at the local post office, they, they couldn't quite understand how they'd had a run on um, juggling balls. There seemed to be a craze sweeping through the village and uh, they were going down to the, the wholesalers to, to buy more. Um, but yeah, it, it gradually took off and, and at lunch times and play times the, the playground was full of, of children throwing multicoloured balls into the air and practising tricks. I think the children were probably inspired by Miss Farrah and the fact that if she was going to learn to do it and succeed, they wanted to do so as well. Uh, it was almost a sort of feeling of collectiveness. It was a, a, a real shared experience where um, people were encouraging each other um, and you'd see the, the, the joy and the thrill on somebody's face the, the first time that they, they managed to catch two or three balls in sequence or the first time that they, they managed to perform a new trick. It isn't long before juggling is having an effect on the behaviour of pupils, as dinner lady Audrey is pleased to report. A lot more placid, more caring with each other, sharing. Football is strong teamwork where the juggling, they will share more. Passing it to each other, as in uh, you can do it with two or with three, and they, they will participate more together. What goes through your head, what goes through your mind when you're juggling? Ramsey. Nothing, yeah. just stare at the balls. But There's always more to do. You can never finish, really. Do you juggle at home? Yeah. yeah. Have you tried juggling with your parents' best china? No, and I'm not gonna. <laughs> Can you juggle? Only with two. Not very good. You're gonna show me? Well, if you really insist. Thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> I think it could have been anything. I think it, it just happened to be something that caught the children's imagination. Um, I think what it does give us a message about is, is if children are interested in what they're learning and motivated to learn and engaged, and if um, they have the chance and the opportunity to follow their own interests sometimes, um, that that does bring its own rewards. For one year, six pupil juggling meant the difference between failure and high achievement. Ben was finding it difficult to form relationships with his teachers, especially Mr Peacock, who was on supply for a term. Ben's a very bright boy, um, but there was a streak in Ben that was perhaps a little bit rebellious. And he saw me as a supply teacher who came in, and as a supply teacher, you've sometimes sort of got to set the ground rules, if you like. Uh, and we'd had one or two, I suppose, set twos in the past. And so uh, our relationship wasn't a very good one, wasn't a very strong one. Uh, even got to the extent where Ben didn't really want to be in the class with me. And he'd go and do his work, but in somebody else's class. Me and Mr Peacock didn't get on. we just, every time he was like a sub for us, we got, we like, I had to, I went in a different classroom to him because we just like hated each other really. What happened since then, he saw the juggling and how relationships since then, we've just bonded and it's had a, a dramatic effect on, uh, on our relationship and with some of the other children as well, not just Ben, but with some of the other yeah. children as well. Why is that? I think we've, Ben has realised that we've got something in common that perhaps he, he never saw before and he saw something in me that he hadn't seen before, certainly another side of me that he'd never witnessed before uh, and something that he obviously liked. I, as a teacher, I'm very keen to, to help any child to do whatever to learn any skill that I can help in. So I was keen to help Ben because I saw the positive side of this that well, perhaps it could be a situation where we can uh, build some bridges. At first I wanted to do a trick which is called the shower where it goes like round like that and he said that that's the hardest one and he and then he said and it so he said keep off that and do a trick that's called cascade where it goes there 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 and kind of and I said it's it's hard and then he like showed me how to do it and then it, it showed me like a method where you go one two three and it got easier and easier as he told me how to do it. So whenever Mr Peacock was in, it was an opportunity for this particular pupil to develop his, his skills and talents in, in juggling, and he really was amazing. Um, and you'd see the two of them out there at playtimes. They were able to do tricks together. Um, so there'd be, Mr Peacock would be throwing and Ben would be catching. Um, and this amazing relationship developed between them. When it came to the time for him to That's take his, his tests, um, this, this improved attitude and relationship was already beginning to have, have an effect. And when he got his results through, he, he, he had got level fives across the board, um, which in the January, we, we were not certain that he would, would do. I mean, it was what he should have done. There's been no comparative study, but members of staff believe there's been a marked improvement in concentration and achievement amongst all juggling pupils. It can also help de-stress teachers. Some of the children decided that they, uh, it helped them listen and concentrate, and uh, you know, it's been documented as well that behaviour improved as well. Uh, some children who'd had problems with behaviour sort of used it somehow to manage their behaviour and apply themselves. There's a term in a lot of schools now called brain gym, where children are doing things with the right hand and the left hand, and the left side of the brain is helping the right side of the brain. Well, if you're doing this at break for 10, 15 minutes, that's the best brain gym I can think of. So from an educational point of view, it's tremendous. It's very relaxing, it's de-stressing. Once you start messing about with your juggling equipment, as we tend to call it these days, um, Everything else goes into the background. You don't think about anything else other than what you're doing, so it's very calming as well. Juggling has helped in the classroom by providing an ideal subject for filmmaking using the school's digital cameras. Ben and friend Matty made the first film featuring the skills of Mr Peacock. Now all the jugglers regularly appear on the screen. For those who want to learn juggling, here's all there is to it.
Now, the secret of juggling is the throw and getting rid of the spare ball that's in the hand. It's not the catching. If you throw a ball miles away, your hand will automatically go for it. It's the throw. And you've got to imagine you have a pane of glass just above the head and you're aiming for the two corners. So away we go, and it's just getting rid of the ball that's in the hand. And we've got a basic cascade. It's like everything else, you want to progress, you want to learn more tricks. And the next logical thing to do, of course, is numbers. Balls. Okay, so what's the next progression is clubs. And it's a basic three club cascade. But before you consider introducing juggling into school, beware of the dangers. And one of the biggest is just talking about it, as Carol Farrah found out during our interview balls it's the kind of balls that they use because there are a variety of balls that can that children can use for juggling but i have to say that they were very sensible for the most part most of the children had um, the soft balls <laughs> going back to the safety <laughs> issues did you find pupils started juggling with house bricks or cats or whatever and no, I have to say that on the whole they were very sensible. Um, I, don't, I don't think we catch anybody misusing their balls. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Peacock's got clubs as well. <laughs> as well as what? Balls. Where does he keep his balls? In a drawstring bag. <laughs> How do you cope with the innuendo that comes with juggling? What innuendo? I don't know. Can you explain? <laughs> Carol is continuing her assemblies on the joy of learning, but she's moved on from juggling to playing the recorder, along with the new Earswick Primary School staff recorder ensemble. <laughs> the whole staff now uh, learn to play the recorder. And uh, given my lack of musical talent, I don't think I'll be impressing the children as much <laughs> with that at all. There is currently um, an initiative for children to uh, learn to play a musical instrument. So we are hoping to inspire the children um, through the staff learning as well. Um, we have made a start and again a number of staff have been hiding their light under bushels because we already have some quite talented musicians in school. <laughs> One, two, three, four. And when's your performance? A couple of weeks time in assembly. And will you be ready? Will we be ready? <laughs> Behind the fun of performing lies a serious point. The staff rooms up and down the country are full of lights being held under bushels. Perhaps even some who can juggle and play the recorder at the same time. Oh, no, no. 